For many years Canon positioned APS-C cameras mainly as a transitional step toward full frame, a learning stage rather than a final destination, while other brands proved that APS-C could stand on its own as a professional, high-end format, and the Canon EOS R7 Mark II represents a clear attempt to correct that long-standing imbalance and redefine Canon's APS-C strategy in a way that feels intentional, competitive, and future-proof. Because this camera is not simply about refreshing specs, but about restoring credibility in a segment that risks being defined elsewhere if Canon does not act decisively. The broader context here is that Canon and Nikon historically shared similar philosophies where APS-C fed into full-frame systems, reinforcing the idea that serious photographers would eventually graduate. But the market evolved, expectations changed, and APS-C became a destination format for wildlife photography, sports photography, travel shooters, and hybrid creators who value reach, speed, portability, and professional autofocus without the size and cost penalties of full frame, which is why the R7 Mark II is best understood as a strategic pivot rather than a routine update, signaling that Canon no longer wants advanced APS-C users to feel limited or pressured to switch ecosystems, and instead wants to offer a flagship APS-C mirrorless camera that delivers genuine long-term value. At the heart of this shift is sensor strategy where rumors and forecasts point toward a high-resolution APS-C sensor in the 30-plus to potentially 39-megapixel range, not to win a numbers game but to provide meaningful cropping flexibility for wildlife shooters and sports photographers who rely on distant subjects, paired with significantly faster readout speeds to minimize rolling shutter and finally make electronic shutter shooting viable for action which naturally raises questions about whether Canon will adopt backside illuminated or stacked sensor architecture to balance readout speed, noise performance, and dynamic range, especially given the trade-offs seen in other high-end cameras where faster readout can impact high ISO image quality, an issue that matters deeply for dawn and dusk shooting when animals are most active and light is scarce. Beyond the sensor itself, buffer depth and burst behavior are expected to see major improvements, addressing one of the most common frustrations with the original model by enabling sustained high-speed shooting without punishing photographers for trusting continuous bursts, likely supported by faster card standards that allow rapid clearing, efficient workflow, and even direct editing from media, reinforcing the idea that this camera is built for real-world professional use rather than spec sheet bragging rights. Autofocus refinement will be another cornerstone, not through flashy new buzzwords but through quieter, more meaningful upgrades such as better subject retention in cluttered environments, smoother handoff between detection modes, improved consistency with birds, animals, and fast-moving subjects, and fewer edge case failures that can cost a shot, all of which matter far more to working photographers than headline features, Positioning is equally important, because the R7 Mark II is not intended to be a cheaper imitation of full-frame flagships, nor a compromise option, but rather a camera that leans into APS-C strengths like effective reach, lighter lenses, faster handling, and portability, while allowing full-frame models to retain advantages in extreme low-light performance and depth control, creating a clear but respectful separation within the lineup. Expected performance forecasts include electronic shooting speeds potentially reaching up to 30 frames per second depending on sensor design, mechanical burst rates in the low double digits, a native ISO range starting around 100 and extending into high values where the real concern is not the number itself but how cleanly the sensor handles noise under demanding conditions, improved metering sensitivity for challenging lighting, fast electronic shutter speeds suitable for sports and wildlife and in body image stabilization that could rival or exceed previous generations thanks to the smaller sensor mass. Dynamic range improvements, even modest ones, could have outsized impact for hybrid shooters, particularly if higher-end log profiles become available for video, which would elevate the R7 Mark II from a capable stills camera with video features into a true hybrid APS-C flagship suitable for documentary work, nature filmmaking, and high-quality content creation, especially if paired with oversampled 4K high frame rate recording or even 8K UHD derived from the full sensor width, aligning with current expectations in the competitive mirrorless camera market.
Processing is expected to rely on Canon's proven image processor rather than experimental additions. Ensuring stability and performance consistency, while advanced autofocus intelligence continues to trickle down from higher-end models without undermining the broader product hierarchy. Pricing will ultimately define how bold this move feels, but forecasts suggest a premium APS-C price bracket that reflects its flagship intent without directly cannibalizing mid-range full-frame offerings, reinforcing the idea that this camera exists to keep serious APS-C photographers engaged, loyal, and confident in the system. Taken together, all of these elements point toward a camera that is less about chasing rivals and more about closing a strategic blind spot, repositioning APS-C as a legitimate professional option within Canon's ecosystem, and ensuring that photographers who choose APS-C for its practical advantages no longer feel second-class or temporary, because the Canon EOS R7 Mark II is shaping up to be a destination camera designed for wildlife shooters, sports enthusiasts, travel creators, and hybrid professionals who want speed, reach, reliability, and modern mirrorless performance in a compact, forward-looking body, making it one of the most important APS-C releases Canon has attempted in years and a potential turning point for how the format is perceived moving into 2026 and beyond.